Hey Bear Squad, what is up? This is Polar Bear here. We have filled this machine, or we're about to fill this machine up. But uh, before we do, look at this. A credit card reader, new board inside. Um, this is something I really want to talk about today because I have a lot of people asking about trying to get into this business. And uh, I strongly recommend if you're going to get into this business, don't make some of the mistakes I made. This machine's really old. And uh, it's a workhorse though. It's it's a really solid machine. This is an AP6000. Um, when you're buying machines, I want you to think about something. I want you to think about how much you're buying it for, okay? I, uh, I actually paid a really good price for this machine. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think I paid like $400 for this machine or something. And uh, it was in full working order the way it was. But it, it's an old machine. So when you have an old machine like this, and it's got, uh, it's got like just the old school motherboards and all that good stuff. It's not MDB. Um, actually, that doesn't even mean much yet. Uh, I'll get to that later. <laughs> uh, so here's what I'm trying to get at here. The credit card reader cost me $400, right? That's normally just, that's just an upgrade in its own. But in order for the credit card reader to do what I want it to do, which is cash report sales, so I know how much is in the bill collector before I go collect, um, the motherboard needs to be completely updated. In order for this credit card reader to work at all, the motherboard's going to be updated uh, because it was not MDB, which stands for multi data bus system for those of you who are new to the channel. Um, it's a standardized, uh, it's basically a standardized software that vending machines use. I think uh, I think there are other things that use it too, but I'm not sure what they are. Now, you have to upgrade the motherboard and then you gotta buy a bill collector and you gotta buy a coin collector. So here's a breakdown. The machine was $400, right? So we got another $400 in the credit card reader. We're at 800 now. The motherboard was $315. So now we're at what? Uh, 8, 9, 11, 15, 11, 15, and now we go to buy the bill collector and the coin acceptor. So I got really good quality um, coin collector and, uh, or bill collector and coin acceptor, and uh, between the two of them it cost me another $300. Now that doesn't, this old machine, which is a workhorse, this is an AP6000, like I said before, really solid machines. Uh, after everything's said and done, if you don't factor the time in, it took me like two days to get this thing perfect. If you don't factor the time in, um, this machine overall, I lost my train of thought. I was trying to tell you how much it cost me overall to uh, to actually make it. We're 11, 11, 15 plus 300 is 14, 15. So like $1,500 basically to turn it to a new machine. And uh, it's not totally new yet either. When we close the door at the end of this, if we close the door, I can't remember if I filmed that or not. Uh, it's still got like that wood paneling and the brown paint. Uh, so I'm probably gonna put another $200 into it to get it to look like a new machine. Uh, that's just food for thought. I want you guys to think about that. Uh, when you're going out and buying machines, check if it's MDB, make sure that it'll cash report. Uh, if you're, if you're not in the Patreon group, hop in the Patreon group and I'll tell you if it'll cash report. Um, but definitely if you guys are going to get into this business, think about what you buy before you buy it. Uh, being gung ho is great, but just don't make mistakes like I did. Think about what you buy before you buy it. So, anyways, to get on with the show today, I'm pretty happy with the way everything came out. Uh, the machine is fully upgraded. Uh, we have it, do I have it pulled up? I have it pulled up right now and we can actually see what's in it. I'm gonna scroll all the way up here. Oh no, that's, I've got the wrong snack machine. Hold on, let me grab the right snack machine. And we'll look at the product maps. All right, so that top row, the top four, uh, is still completely full. This is something that I did yesterday, or the 
the day before? Yesterday. I did this yesterday. So, uh, top is completely full. Chex Mix. Have we done Chex Mix yet? We haven't. Um, the row that we're doing right now, I don't think I was able to fill that up all the way. And it looks like uh, we ran out of product on this. <laughs> so, we're in that really weird stage right now. I've been upgrading machines and uh, I've been waiting until they were like completely empty to upgrade them so we have to completely refill them, right? And uh, this machine, this location has always been a problem. We've always had issues with this location because we had a USI 3014A in here that just had a huge amount of problems and continued to have a huge amount of problems. Now, I actually like USI machines, but that specific machine just, it had so many issues. The, it had a really old Maka bill acceptor that uh, was just very, very difficult to use. The dollar bills had to go in a certain way in order, <laughs> in order for it to accept them. And it was just a really crappy, crappy machine. So we wound up pulling that machine out and we put this one in. That solved the problem entirely, but Prior to the bill acceptor issue, we had a melting product issue because everything is glass around this, so when the sun comes in, it, it gets warm. Luckily, this machine has a built-in fan on the inside that is currently working, and uh, that has pretty much resolved that issue. So we lost, I want to say like $300 worth of product <laughs> in this machine. This is my only machine that is still in the red. Uh, all of my other machines have paid themselves off, but this this machine in particular is still in the red. It, uh, we haven't broke a hundred dollars profit on this machine yet, which is scary because we've dumped a lot of money into this machine. So hopefully, this is the last it. This is hopefully this is where it needs to be. Wow, I'm shaking that box like crazy. Um. I'm going through immense amount of products, but we're filling it up this time. We've got, I'm pretty sure we've got everything that could be fixed, fixed. The machine is completely up to date outside of the paint and the, uh, the front decals. And uh, we have a, we have a solid machine here. Uh, when I came in to start upgrading the machine, they said that everything had worked perfectly for the past month. So I was pretty happy about that. The bill acceptor had a decent amount of money in it. So compared to what it normally has, it had a decent amount of money in it. Uh, this is the location for those of you that have been in the channel for a while. I know I've got a lot of people that are new that are coming in and thank you so much for watching the content. Um, those of you that are, that have been around for a while, you know that this is the same location that, uh, we had a WTF moment and pulled two dollars out of this machine after a week and uh, I was less than impressed with that. So this is a last ditch effort to really make this location shine, you know, like really make it turn into something good. We now know when to service it and how to service it. You can see, uh, you can see on this one the checks mix there are 10 in the container uh, there are 12 slots in the coil it looks like uh, we haven't sold any checks mix yet granted it's only the next day the uh, cheese it's cheese it's there are currently eight in there so we'll see how many we put in I can't remember it's really cool to be able to look at what's in the machine right now and uh, what we put in the machine it looks like we put eight in there so we're going to pull this out and we, we need to fill this machine like to the brim uh, with everything that we have. I was coming here after servicing another location and what stinks about when you're filling a machine like this and the machine, it, what stinks is the machine doesn't have enough money in it because there wasn't enough product in it prior to purchase all the products. So the next time we go to our really, really busy location, we have to go there, collect, and then we have to go buy product and then go back there. So we're, we're wasting money by doing double trips. But this should be the last time that we have to do this. Um, Cause now that we know 
uh, now that we know what's in the machines and how much money is in the machines, we know not to go visit that location until there's enough money in the machine for, uh, for us to make back what we're going to put into it. That's why credit card readers are so important. Um, NIACs in particular, I'm not sure if uh, USAT has a cash reporting feature like NIACs. Uh, I have a buddy that has got USAT and I showed him the I showed him the software that I'm using and he says that his reports are not like mine. I get reports every couple of seconds that tell me how like if someone buys something with a dollar out of my machine, I can know seconds after it happened. Which is pretty cool. I really like knowing I really like knowing that. It really makes things a lot easier for me to run and operate my business. And let's be real, the use of cash is kind of diminishing. Um, I'm noticing it in all of my machines as I put these credit card readers on. Uh, cash payments are decreasing. They're, they're still the majority. Cash payments are still the majority. But uh, the cash payments are decreasing. Um, credit card payments are increasing and uh, what's really shocking is mobile payments are increasing as well uh, mobile payments are still the smallest percentage of payments that are being made but uh, mobile payments are being made and that's uh, when I say mobile payments I'm talking about the use of apps to uh, pay for a product these credit card readers that I have from NIAX they, uh, they have the capability of accepting payments via application, which is great. So you have, uh, you have like Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, they've got the Monk's Wallet. Um, if you have, say you have uh, Bitcoin cards, um, you can use your Bitcoin cards because they're, they're Visa technically. Uh, so pretty much any form of payment that you want to use, you can use it on these readers, which is absolutely amazing. Another word of advice, uh, this, isn't a, this isn't really advice, this is an opinion. Um, uh, some people disagree with my opinion here, but uh, I am not the biggest fan of CoinCo products. I'm not going to talk like too horrible about them. I've just had really poor luck and I feel like they're just, I feel like they don't put a lot of thought into their bill acceptors. I have less problems with their coin acceptors, but uh, I'm not too fun of CoinCo when it comes to their, uh, when it comes to their bill acceptors. They tend to, they, they have more parts that break. <laughs> We'll say that they have more parts that are prone to wearing out than uh, MEI does or Mars. I like Mars products quite a bit better. We've got the old Sour Patch Kids going in. Heck yeah. But uh, this is the first time in a long time that the, I've been confident enough in this machine to fill it up as much as we did. Um, I'm. This is a tire shop, obviously. It's a mechanic shop and a tire shop. But uh, I'm very concerned. I'm very concerned about the tire season that's coming up. Uh, we're we're gonna have quite a bit of weather coming soon, so I want to have uh, I want to have all my tire shops upgraded as soon as possible. I'd like to know exactly what's in each machine. That way, when the change happens and I need to frequent a little bit more, I can just look at the software, which I do every morning and uh, go through and know what I need to do, right? So I'm trying to make sense of what I'm gonna do with what I got here because <laughs> I've got a weird mix of product and uh, I wind up using like almost every single bit of it. Now that I go back and think about it, I really should have uh, put Famous Amos, I didn't put any Famous Amos in this machine, I really should have. I need to order more uh, grandma's cookies. Those things seem to sell really well. I can't remember. I've had so many people recommend grandma's cookies, and uh, I really, really wish I, uh, 
I can actually order them now. I should just probably start ordering them. I need to, I need to get used to ordering from multiple suppliers because I haven't been mo ordering from multiple suppliers at all. We'll go through and we'll take a look. Uh, we'll take a look here at what we're, are we on the second drawer? Second drawer. Joys down. Skittles bags. It's really hard because I didn't fill this machine all the way. I just did not have enough product to fill it all the way. So it's hard to tell what's sold and what hasn't. The grandma's cookies on the very last selection, they're sold out. There's two, one, two. Yeah, you'll see when we get there. But uh, at the time of, uh, at the time of dubbing over this, it is Friday at 8.58 a.m. And uh, normally I would be servicing my salsa bottling plant today, but thanks to the software, I'm not going to waste a trip down there because the uh, bill acceptor has not met my, we'll say, it, we'll say it hasn't met my standards yet, the cash box. Um, that and there's not really any bin outs, so there's no reason for me to be there. You want to have at least a couple bin outs before you're servicing your machines. Not a huge amount, but a couple, you know. And uh, always make sure you've got your phone number in really, really big writing somewhere on the machine. That way people can call you if there's an issue. Even though they probably won't call you if there's an issue. It's really strange. People will go, I was reading a post the other day, and people will go out of their way to uh, put a out of order sign on a machine, but they they won't take the two seconds to call you to let you know that there's a problem with the machine. And that's, uh, that's really interesting. I've never had it happen to me, but there was an instance in this forum where... Uh, it had happened to someone I've actually spoken with a couple times and uh, he was pretty grumpy about it and I really don't blame him that's that's really frustrating when people uh, I would so much prefer to have someone call me and tell me that it's broken hey your machine's not working right it stole a dollar be surprised at how angry people get about that dollar <laughs> but it's part of customer service though you get a you got to be able to handle the situation and take care of it. Now, something that I've started doing to rectify issues like that is uh, not only will I give them the product that they were trying to get, but I'll give them their dollar back as well. And that seems to really, uh, really hit home with people. And the, it just shows what a shows that I care about the business that I'm creating. And, uh, people really recognize it, which is awesome. That's, I, I love, uh, I love getting the response. Oh, look, the phone's ringing. Hold on. That was super interesting. So I just got a uh, phone call from another country and, uh, I don't have, I'm assuming it's because my phone number shows up in some of my videos, which I, I don't really mind. It doesn't bother me too much, but, uh, I don't have uh, international calling. So even if I wanted to pick up the phone, I couldn't. But uh, that was I found that really interesting. Had they uh, had a uh, country code too? I'm gonna I'm gonna Google that real quick while we're while we're doing this and see what country just tried to call me. What country has the code two? Canada. Someone was trying to call me from Canada. Interesting. I, I think that's pretty interesting. Anyways, what was I talking about? I have no idea what in the world I was talking about at this point. Customer satisfaction, that's what I was talking about. Ramen's coming out, guys. We're pulling the ramen out. <laughs> I don't know why I put that in the machine. It never sold well, ever. Like, maybe... I don't know what I was thinking. I, I genuinely do not know what I was thinking with putting ramen in that machine, but I did. So we're gonna go back to the machine. I'm really excited that I can wait until the machine has enough money in it to know that it's time for me to go and service it. Uh, 
it's just like, uh, and it's, it's coming into effect a lot. Like I'm able to view these machines uh, next week. I think next week is going to be the most passive earning week that I've ever had. <laughs> Because I've got I've got one more uh, credit card install, which is a hardcore. Well, no, I've got two more after this one. So I've got just a board install at our co-op location because that's not reporting cash sales. And we'll you guys will see that video Monday. And then we have a board bill acceptor, coin acceptor, and credit card reader install at. Uh, one of our tire warehouse locations and see I'm putting a second row of Snickers in here but uh, that will be our last install for a little while um, I'm gonna have to build up some capital after that as far as credit card readers go we will only have three machines left that need credit card readers but as far as boards go we'll have five machines that need boards in order to report cash sales so right now we have uh, I believe we have two Royal 660-9s and uh, if you get a Royal 660-9 or a Royal 660-8 with uh, a red button board like the soda machine you see right next to this one has a red button control board in it uh, those red button control boards will support a credit card reader but you won't be able to actually see the cash sales and uh, that's the problem that we're running into with those but that's about it for today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to love life and live your dreams. Peace out, Bear Squad. Darn it, why can't I ever hit the button at the right point in time? <laughs>